Planning for your next trip? Elevate your travel style with Quince. Quince has all the jet-setting essentials you'll want for your next getaway, like European linen, premium luggage options, buttery soft Italian leather bags, and so much more. And it's all priced at 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Plus, Quince only works with factories that use safe and ethical manufacturing practices. Pack your bags with high-quality essentials you'll be wearing for vacations to come with Quince. Go to quince.com slash trip for free shipping and 365-day returns. One size fits all seemed like a good idea for clothes. Nice dress. Uh, it's a it's a t-shirt. Until you tried it on. Same goes for your health care. That's why United Healthcare offers a variety of flexible, budget-friendly coverage for medical, vision, dental, and more. So whether you're between jobs, coming off a parent's plan, or even missed open enrollment, you can find the plan that fits you best. Find out more about United Healthcare coverage at uh1.com. That's uh1.com. Hello Egg Chasers, it's the Egg Chasers Rugby Podcast, a podcast about rugby that doesn't take itself or the game too seriously. Back in the rugby dungeon after the regular season, in the Premiership at least, is done. An ultimate season in the top 14 done, and there's about four months left of... Uh, sorry, URC, and there's about four months left of the top 14. But bottom line, there's loads of rugby to talk about, and we will be on this podcast. The only podcast that's there for you 52 weeks of the year, every single Monday morning, as we have been for very nearly 11 years. Which is 11 years. bonkers, isn't it? How are you doing, JB? Very well, thank you, Tim. How are you? Very well. I'm in the rugby dungeon with JB, who is uh, barefoot and only fans ready. And uh, Philip is saving the nation, saving lives. No, he's not. Second hand. Oh, no, he's not. He's not. No, he's not. He's, he's um, not down the line because his, his wife's on call. No, because his wife lives. is getting absolutely leathered in <laughs> Portugal, from what I understand. Well, I mean, it's just R and R for a hero. Exactly right. For an, a, a, so he's still saving lives in my mind. Well, it's all about saving lives. North Dorset Sevens got no idea what the link is, but <laughs> we need more players. And if you want to answer the call for North Dorset, Dorset Sevens, I suggest now is the time to do so. Yeah. So this is just this is obviously a bit of rugby, lovely part of the world. No, it's super serious. Yeah, it's bit, more serious than yeah. Springboks. Bit of super serious rugby, and a lovely part of the world, but. It's the uh, it's the session afterwards that's the best bit. It's outstanding. <laughs> Tell you what, it's I, exceptional. I've had some good old drinks at North Dorset North Dorset Sevens. I can also single handedly say it was one of the most physically taxing days of my life. Like, I don't think I've ever been in such a bad shape after <laughs> a game of, uh, after a day of rugby. Uh, Every single second of every single game of tens and sevens that we qualified for, and then we went and won two tournaments. Yeah, I played, and it was brutal. Yeah, so we're looking for super social players. We're looking for vets as well. We've got a team, but we need your. We need. We need you if you fancy a bit of rugby. To be clear, when we're saying vets, we mean the guys over a certain age, not people that help animals. Or, or, we or take former them, military. We'll definitely take former military. Yeah, absolutely. Personnel. Yeah. So anyway, contact headchasers at gmail dot com. Get in touch. Yeah, and the reason you should do it is because it is just a great, great bit of fun. Great bit of fun. Agreed. Um, but you won't be there, Tim. No, I'll be uh, uh, when the North Dorset Sevens is on. I will be in the. I'll be listening to the DJ in Pretoria. The DJ. Well, the, the, if, if you've ever seen. South Africa games in Pretoria, the, the DJ there is notorious for playing like 90s, 90s R&B tracks. Oh, I non-stop. love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And, well, and Sweet Caroline. Well, hold that thought because a patron this week, we're going to talk all about why you're South African. Oh, right. Why okay. you're slowly becoming South African and we'll really get into it. All right. Uh, well, um, patreon.com forward slash egg chasers is where you can get extra content and... As JB said, we'll do an, we'll do another podcast there just for our patrons. We can go into some areas we don't normally touch. Uh, let me let Phil in. What one of these will he be on? Philip? Is it that one? Philip? Testing. Thing. Yeah, there we go. You're live. Right now you're live, so don't yeah. say anything you normally would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not our normal pre-pod chats. No, no, no. We've uh, covered it all off. <laughs> All the formalities are done. We can just get on with talking about rugby now. Fantastic. How's your weekend been, mate? Uh, 
very child centric. Claire's on the smash in Porto, <laughs> Portugal. So she's just uh, doing a recce for the the um, European Champions Cup semi final weekend. Yep. Yes, exactly. Yep, well, um, actually, her weekend, the pictures she's been sending me are, are very much like our weekends. Lots of oysters and white wine. So yes, I'm but... sure, sure there'll be a few good tips. <laughs> um, well, actually, me and Phil might be on the smash on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I am going down to London. And they're Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday coincides with the rugby writers' lunch, which I've then decided should I or should I not go? I'm probably not going to go at Do you this not, point. Was that because you don't think you'll be welcome? I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be welcome. <laughs> You'd be welcomed <laughs> by many of the people there. Well, um, well, probably. Um, and also, <laughs> Charlie, I'd love to see you. Many people would love to see me. Yeah. Many, 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 many uh, adoring listeners would love to see me. Um, Mostly to get content for their own stuff, I guess. But um, nevertheless, <laughs> uh, I'm also uh, <laughs> I was potentially going to be, be meeting a guy on Wednesday, but he can't meet me. Do you know why? Playing rugby? Kind of close. What ca- what thing might he be, might he be doing on um, on Wednesday? Visiting his lawyers because he was a sports personality that's been raided <laughs> by the police at four a.m. this morning. I don't. Um... Well, actually, the, the gentleman in question is. Is in the, is in the legal profession, but the reason that we can't go for a coffee on Wednesday is because he's participating in the Labour Party Sports Day. Oh wow! Isn't that quite wow. cool? isn't that quite cool? Was well, that? Could you, I'm you not get an invite? Yeah. Sports. Could you not get an invite? I just don't know if my politics would quite <laughs> fit in with that event. Surely, but, it, surely at that sports they, day, but, everyone wins. There's no winner. Everyone wins. Yeah, but you know, it, it's a big tent party now. I mean, I don't see why I couldn't go and yeah. you know, do egg and spoon against Sakia. <laughs> <laughs> what well, What do you reckon he did? At, like, are, are there any rugby? I was just thinking this actually as you were saying it. Are there any rugby players in? Like MPs that played rugby or love love their rugby, no. Uh, well, well, that, that's yes. the problem. That's the problem well, well, in politics. Hang on. So Gordon Brown lost an eye playing rugby, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, I think that might be an embellished tale. That I don't know. Lost an eye playing rugby. I think, like yeah, any given Sunday, that that would <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a, a well known story if that, um, if that were the facts. There was a lad at Sale who was really who got really political. Do you remember him? No. Really political. Uh, I can't remember his name. Um, other rugby players, there's one which, oh, uh, there's one on the tip, tip of my tongue. But um, of of note, who died this week was Tony O'Reilly. Not a politician, but a very, very famous Irish um, Irishman that ended up owning, did he own the Irish Times in the end? Tony O'Reilly, one of the youngest ever, ever Lions, and then turned himself into one of Ireland's leading business tycoons. Well, well, well. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that might, I, I'm not up for... Rugby, uh, you know, Dream 15s in any way. But maybe a politically active 15 might be quite good fun. <laughs> Lachlan McCaffrey, that, that's one. He he stood for office on the basis of... David Pocock would be captain. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so of uh, controversial Australian back rows and their politics, Lachlan McCaffrey stood <laughs> for high office. Uh, I think he stood for, uh, an M- for an MP based on... The fact that his dad ran a basically a pro a pro life party in Australia. Okay, but yeah. David Pocock is an MP, so that's why he. Oh make yeah, it. no, no, he's not. He's a senator. Oh, how on is senator? Wh- whichever, whatever. He's he's, in, he's been elected to a. Do they have an elected upper house? I don't know. I don't know. But he's been elected to a position. Yes. Yes. True. Yeah. Anyway, we've got so much rugby to talk about. We really should crack on with that. I, I'm quite happy doing this. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch Super Saturday, Phil? And what did you watch? How did you watch it? Uh, I actually watched it afterwards because I had some some family stuff for my old man's birthday this weekend. Um, so in the evening, obviously, I was dealing with the kids for a lot of the we- the weekend. Uh, when I got them down, I sat myself on the turbo trainer in the gym for an hour, hour and a half, and kind of watched, kind of skipped through all of the games, watching the good bits, watching the cards, the uh, the tries, and anything else interesting that happened. So I kind of didn't watch it live, but I've seen quite a lot of it. What did you do, Jay? I watched the sale game intently from start to finish, and I watched a few highlights. Um, I watched it live, because I think that's kind of how you should watch these bigger games. And I quite enjoyed it. Uh, Do you know, I was watching Owen Farrell, 
And it just made me reflect on how good he is. No, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> but the amount of quality, not quality, but the amount of almost legendary players which will be leaving mm. various clubs at the end of the season. So Farrell, Vunapola's obviously, Courtney Laws, but also lots of lads who are sort of stalwarts of their clubs who are moving on. Sam James is moving on. And, you know, that's, I mean, if you watch Sale, that's a huge deal. And when he came on this weekend, he was absolutely class. But yeah, across the league, there's going to be a lot of turnover and a lot of um, club heroes going. More so, I'd say, than normal. Jasper Visa being another one. Yeah. Johnny May. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, Esther Hazen's going, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to, I think more. Every year now, we're going to see a turnover of players that have really made a name for themselves in the Premiership until that salary cap goes up sub- so substantially that they will stay for the long term. If if any clubs can afford to pay up to the salary cap, yes. or, well, some will always pay up. But, Sorry, uh, if, some, if any owners can afford to pay up to the salary cap. Yes, it is the owners. Yeah. Because um, that, that will be the problem. That'll be the next problem. So I guess the first question would be, how do you think the final day lived up to its billing? Yeah, so I, I watched, I started off watching next to Leicester. Yep. Because I was thinking that's, that's they're, they're the pole position to take advantage if there's, uh, if the results go their way elsewhere. And then I, I then obviously gave up on that one while I was keeping an eye on the other games. Gave up on that one because that was done and just focused, yeah, second half particularly on say, or V Saracens. I do think, I was thinking about how the NFL do this, and I, I, I can't help thinking, whilst it, and, and Premier League football did it today in exactly the same fashion as the Premiership, I do, is it putting the, it's putting the fairness of sport, quote unquote, first, and the and the competitiveness and all the rest of it, but it's not putting the fans first. It doesn't make, I don't think it makes for a great spectacle, all the games going on at the same time. I don't know, is the answer. I just don't know. Um, how do the NFL do it? They don't do it all at the same time, do they? No, but they they will make the biggest deal and put in the prime time spots the games which are of most consequence. Yeah, and also they have to do it slightly differently because of time zones, don't they? Yeah. Whereas the Premier League, as in football, they do it all at the same time. Yeah. I think all at the same time is fine. Yeah, it is fine. I, I do get it. I t- Of course I understand it, but I just would have liked to have seen... I would have loved to have... Um, I don't know, to have seen the Harlequins v Bristol game first, obviously the you'd never know how it would have panned out and would the results have been the same if it was done in a different way. But let's assume all the results were the same. I'd love to have seen the Bristol v Harlequins game first and then seen Sale well, at Saracens. On. So we've got five games, right? So that's three different slots. So the first slot should be the most inconsequential game. So Oh yeah, Gloucester-Newcastle, get it out of the way. Done, in fact, gone. In fact, don't even, don't even broadcast don't, don't, it. No, better still, don't play it. <laughs> don't play it. Just a play. As in, literally, don't play. show up. Don't play. Make them play on the Thursday night. Yeah, absolutely right. So, kind of do do that. Whatever that thing is, do that. Right. Now, second of all, you want like the two teams or the two matches which might qualify for top four, followed by so that's, uh, that's Leicester, Exeter, and Bristol Quins. Yeah. And I don't know. In the first time slot, maybe you have a dead rubber if it's like top uh, versus bottom or yeah. one versus two, so like that. So. Northampton. Do, do North. No, I reckon Leicester Exeter would have been the next game you play. The, yeah, I think yeah. you're right. And then, and then possibly Bath Northampton, and then Quinns Bristol or Bristol Quinns. Then Bath Northampton, yeah. and then I would have Saracen Sale. Northampton Bath in the second time slot with Leicester Exeter, and then I don't know. Hang on, yeah, because if Exeter win. Does that automatically knock out? What, what, where's this again? You, you're just going by convention. I, I'm just blue sky thinking this. Just imagine, imagine you had a blank bit of paper. Where's this three time slots come from? Oh, because that. Like, because why, you, why not? Why not four or five? So you go one o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock, oh. and then you just don't play <laughs> Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, New, Newcastle Gloucester. But yeah, I, I could do that. But I want you want to sort of order them so that they yeah. get. More and more exciting. You would program them so yeah. that there, was, there was always something. So on the line. Harlequins Bristol would have to go first. Saracen Sale would have to go last. Yeah, because then, then there would definitely be something on the line. Yeah, and so Northampton Bath would go second. So in the second time time slot, if that's how we do it, yeah, it'd be Bristol Quins Northampton Bath, and then then it'd be Ex- Exeter Leicester 
Sale, Saracens, boom, what a weekend of rugby. Because one of those teams, either Bristol or Harlequins, would probably be in, be in fourth by the time the other game's yeah. kicked off. Of course I understand why it's done the way it is, but I also think, hold on a minute, we keep complaining about how the we need to grow the game, create more of a spectacle. Can you put aside your, oh, but they'll know what they'll need. And <laughs> can you just put that aside and go, it'll make, well, they all know what it'll they make need. for more ama- yeah. even more amazing I, TV. I would argue they all know what they need anyway. They need to win. They, they're, they all need to win. Yeah. And if you win every game from the start of the season till the end of the season, <laughs> you win the competition. So we know, we know what you need. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at um, Super Saturday in the Six Nations. Yeah, the yeah, place. exactly. That, exactly. That has created some incredible days over the years. The, the one, oh, maybe eight or nine years ago, where every game had a knock-on effect and basically every team had to score as many points as possible through to, I think it was England, France in the 8 p.m. kickoff, where England needed to win by about 40 points or 50 yeah. points. It was the first one, and, Wales, Italy. I think it was, yeah, it was. and then Ireland, Scotland. Uh, so it was getting more and more important as you went on. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I like that. Like if if it's good enough for the Six Nations, the it's fine for the Premiership. And just little things like so, I was flicking around on the channels, and I thought, oh my goodness me! Not only the expense of how much it costs to produce, like honestly, cameras, commentary team, producers, the TV truck, it is massive amounts of cash. Well, it's about twenty grand a game to produce. Um, yeah. And no one can watch more than one. It's, it's so I, I and also I was I flicked onto Gloucester Newcastle just for a second and Miles Harrison, the great Miles Harrison, what yeah. a lovely bro- bloke and brilliant commentator. He's commentating on that and nobody's watching it. That's I a... did think that was when I was watching the the kind of catch up. I did think it was weird that Miles Harrison was on that game. <laughs> Does he do much commentary for a TNT? No, not really. No, he's ITV. I was going to say, wheeling out the big guns for a fairly minor match there. Well, this is it, because you need everyone that you can get. I didn't get a call, but you need... Oh. <laughs> <That was fun>. <laughs> <laughs> you need everyone you can get. Um, and, um, yeah, well, so anyway, there, there's a thought to try, try and create even more of a spectacle. But then the tra- I'm, a, I'm a traditionalist about most things, and a lot of people go, it's not fair. Not club badges. It's not fair. Um, but I think, well, it depends what you want. I want, I want as many eyeballs on as many on as much rugby as possible. Yeah, a day of rugby would be awesome. That said, I was, I, man, I watched so much URC rugby. That tournament is so good. Yeah, you watched. Um, you were raving, waxing lyrical on the group about Munster Edinburgh. Oh, it was a bell- that was such a good game to kick off the weekend, Friday night. Yeah, just uh, that that tournament. I'm I'm enjoying it as much as I enjoy the Premiership. Ulster Le- Leinster was ace way to finish the the weekend last night. Edinburgh John Cooney, a uh, John Cooney, the clutch king. Edinburgh Munster was ace on Friday night. That was such a good game. And then, um, yeah, Saturday. So uh, have they got one more round of games. Really yeah, done. Yeah, in two weeks' time they got one more round. Then, right. Then the playoffs, which have a quarter final, semi final, and then a final. So this right, it's never yeah. ending. Yeah. It's yeah. never ending. Hmm. Yeah. So. Where should we start with the Premiership? Where do you want to start? Um, I don't know. Bristol Quins. Okay, I'll, I'll read. I'll read an email. Yes, please. I'll start with an email. Uh, contact Ed Chasers at gmail dot com. Uh, it's from Ed, who says, a "Hell of a game yesterday. Incredible resilience to keep playing after losing Bernard, Janzi van Rensburg, Sheedy, and Genge early on." The point I want to make regarding the people uh, slash the media opinion about Bristol, the commentary yesterday were waxing lyrical about everything Quinn Scott did. And I and I get it. They're an exciting team who play nice rugby with decent English contingent. But with the exception of 10 minutes after the double Bristol injury, they were getting battered. Genji's finish was, quote, lucky, according to David Flatman. Bristol made a 60-metre break <laughs> with about five interchanges and Topsy Ojo's comment was how good Tyrone Green's tackle was. I found it pretty frustrating that right through the game, if you were just listening to comms, Bristol were just there to make up the numbers. What is it about Bristol that people don't like? Usually teams are disliked when they do well or terribly or have no support. 
Bristol are brilliantly supported, very well run, play exciting rugby again after a strange hiatus at the start of the year. Mm. So why are these successes not talked about? Is it a reflection of our lack of recent history in the Prem, meaning we don't have any representation in the media to fight our corner? Um, anyway, uh, so, it's a yeah, really mate. good question. Mm, it is and really I'll tell you why it's a good question, because I... 100% feel that way about Bristol. I don't like them very much. I don't really know why. Um, I, there was obviously, I, I dislike Pat Lamb. I, I say that. I mean, I actually moved. I, I went to university in Bristol just to watch them. So, you know, saying I don't like them is not that true. I, you know, I don't like the branding. I, I do respect the organisation, though. I've got to say that. But, yeah, he, he is right. I mean, if you look at these two teams, for whatever reason it is, I just prefer Harlequins. I just do. And I can't really describe why. Well, this this was the game that I probably watched most of throughout the weekend, and I think he makes a lot of good points because Quins are always talked up for how well they um, play, and they did score some lovely tries. But Bristol were the better team almost entirely throughout this. Um, they they in terms of meters made, they made three times the number of meters with ball in hand that Quins did, and Quins are hardly a uh, Kick at all costs, yeah. kind of team. They're a run from everywhere kind of team. And um, some of the Bristol play, especially considering they started with their second choice 10, they finished with their third or fourth choice 10 alongside other injuries that were mentioned. Did James I Williams move to 10? Uh, Malin's moved to 10. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, okay. Not a terrible shout. And, yeah. And this is a, this is a good, um, it makes a good point about the Bristol team, which is maybe the best centre in the Premiership this year. Bernard Jansi van Rensburg goes off early, and they bring off uh, bring on Vaka Tower, who's absolutely class. Yeah, he is. And then, and then obviously one of the best tens in the league, um, and was playing incredible for most of the season. AJ McGinty, um, he's replaced by Sheedy in the starting lineup. Sheedy goes off relatively early. And they move Malins to ten and bring on Now Laugo, who was awesome as well. To mean you you've got Now Laugo and Ibitoy and uh, Vaca Tower and Heward and Malins, all lovely ball Ra- playing. Randall, moves. did you say Randall as well? Randall's a good point, yeah, because he was sniping everywhere. So, it, but they, they were awesome, and they can do the the tough stuff as well. So just to address the point, though, about why people don't like them, I, the, the lack of media representation is probably a good a good one because there's no one I can think of who's a Bristol legend in the media. Can, can you think of, any, of anyone? It's such a storied club. There's, there's no one, really. And that, again, is probably because they've been in the championship. And it's probably something to do with their nomadic um, player rotation for this, you know so long. I mean, even looking at this team... Uh, you know, Thacker is from Leicester. Genge is truly from Bristol, but developed at Leicester. Sinclair, no. Dunn, no. But Batley, Batley was at Bristol. No, and Worcester. Came back. Oh, yeah. was he at Bristol? Yeah. Then he went to Worcester. Then, okay. then came back. Yeah. Uh, Lua Tua, uh, Filton. Um, Mar- Marcus Brad- uh, Brad- Bradbury, no. Harry Randall, Gloucester, wasn't he? Callum Sheedy is Welsh, but I guess he was developed at Bristol, yeah. so that's fine. But I suppose Ebitoria, the, pe- the people in the media would be recently retired for the people. And I'm... Yeah, so just, I mean, there's nothing homegrown there, is there? It's all bought in. Ma- uh, Malins, um, he, uh, basically the whole lot. Ogre. Yeah, there's hardly anyone. Well, and that's the reason why people don't like them. Well, maybe. Well, because... I'm confused what the point is. Yeah, well, that's exactly, that's exactly what the email said. You know, is it like lack of, you know, homegrown guys? Is it lack of mm. media? It could be both of that. It's certainly not that they are poorly supported because they're a, brilliant, a brilliantly supported club. Hmm. So maybe maybe it's a mix, mix of everything. I think I said a couple of weeks ago, like the magic sauce for a rugby club should be lots of homegrown players with sprinklings of superstars. Well, Bristol have never struggled to get the superstars in, but maybe it's the the other bit that they need. Yeah, there's any uh, you, only really fits Harding. Well, they've had Randall since he was young. I mean, he might have started at Gloucester, but he's been there for all intents and purposes. He's a, he's a Bristol lad. Yeah, so, same with Sheedy. So yeah. So a few, a, f- a sprinkling. Yeah. So maybe, maybe all the reasons that but, they mentioned. But when you look at the table, they're the they're the they're the unluckiest side because they're the form side. Northampton first and Sale third have won twelve matches. Bath second, Saracens fourth have won eleven. Bristol have also won eleven. So it's only bonus points that's kept them out of the playoffs because their points difference is the best in the league. 
Yeah, Is I was it? just about to say that. They have the best points difference in the whole league, better than Northampton, better than Bath, better than Saracen. And that's even when you account for the fact Northampton won 90 nil. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that's things to do with winning later? And like, There's more points on, you know, tired teams or... I got no. I wonder why that is. Oh, well, I, 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 I think the the email Ed touched on it that they had a poor start to the season. And but if you, I mean, you can't obviously. You have to look at the whole season in totality. But if you just carved out the first month, Bristol are the best team in the Premiership. Yeah, and I'll tell you something really impressive about Bristol. So when Pat Lamb first took over, they did play stunning rugby there's no two ways about it and you know that's for a mixture of a mixture of reasons but one of the things was they had a very unusual shape you know i think johnny morgan wrote about it extensively they were the only team doing it and then like everything in the premiership like northampton will probably find out next year they got figured out and as soon as you get fi- figured out things stop so to be able to reinvent themselves and go again is really quite impressive because i thought that Bristol, the way they play, Pat Lamb, complete bested flush. I thought, you know, the end, the end had come last year, and this is just, you know, the stay of execution. Well, it's even what I'd go one further than that. It's not only have people figured Bristol out, opposition Quins knew exactly what Bristol were going to do, and they still couldn't stop them. Yes, maybe. Yes, maybe actually. So even better. You know what we're going to do, and you still can't stop it. Yeah. Like telling the so, opposition your line-out call and still doing it. I'm just looking at the results through the season and, and to emphasise this point um, on the bad start. So Bristol did win their first two games, but then they lost five on the bounce from round three to round seven. And they've only lost seven in total. Wow. Yeah, so they've only lost two of their last 11 games. <laughs> There's of The second half of their season... No one else. Uh, well, I tell you, um, Northampton Saints have lost three of their last twelve. So Bristol are on that form the best team. If, if it was on the second half of the season, or everything after round seven, Bristol would be top. Northampton second, and then in third, God, Bath have lost four. Sale have lost five. Saracens mm. have lost five. Quins have lost six. Like. The second half of the season, they are the best team in the league. So one of the things we can't really do is sort of compare wins this season with previous seasons because the mixture of the t- the mixture of the league. So obviously we've got ten teams down from thirteen teams, and yeah. before that was twelve teams. Mm-hmm. So on win- you'd have to do it on win percentage. Percentage, yeah. But it does look to me like one of the reasons they could have been so close, or in fact anyone could have been so close, is because of the tightly grouped amount of points. So if you look at the wins, it's 12, 11, 12, 11, 11, 9, 10, 9. I mean, that's that feels to me pretty, you know, pretty closely grouped. Yeah. All the way down to extra Chiefs. Is. So you know, maybe if they have that win percentage on in a different... Keep year, going then, down the table. Do the whole numbers all the way down. Yeah, then it goes 5-0. I <laughs> 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 5-0. I was surprised when I looked at the table... Uh, after the it had all finished, it was like oh, Sale have won the same number of games as Northampton. I was quite surprised about that. Yeah, I am actually. And, and, and like, go back a month, and I think people were not really talking about Sale. They're like, oh, they Sale aren't going to make it. I feel like, fair play. Yeah, they've I'm, done really well. Their their and their late season run has been outstanding. I'm astonished Sale made it actually from a few weeks ago. I, I definitely did not think that they had it in them. So I thought the league was going in a different direction to how how they played, mm. and that they'd just been sort of pa- um, passed by. Completely wrong. Completely wrong. So, so JB, you watched the whole of Saracen Sale. I, I watched um, big chunks of it, but talk us through how Sale went to Saracens for the first time in twenty years and got the win. Some stat that isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's not that surprising when you think about it, where these two clubs have been and you know what they've done in re- in recent history. The answer is it wasn't really that obvious. So for most of the game, say most of the game, most of the first half, it was scoreless. So it was a bit of an arm wrestle. It'd be wrong to sort of do sail out of the credit for the win because, you know, they weren't in a very hard place to win against a Saracens team, which for a lot of these lads is now their last ever home game because they're going to be playing away and then maybe they get to a final. So, you know, Sar- Saracens weren't there weren't there to make up the numbers. But I've got to say, I was not impressed with Saracens one bit. 
Yeah, I thought Saracens look like a very undecided team. Half of them want to do one thing, the other half want to do something com- want to do something c- completely different. And they're, they 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 seem to have a lot of ball, but no real cutting edge, no real attack. And then when Sale did finally score through Roebuck, you just felt them go bit by bit <coughs> by bit, and then just winning the small battles. It, I don't think it was a particularly impressive performance by Sale. I think there's I, a lot to be said about Saracens I, not really showing up. I would I disagree a bit. I think uh, I, Saracens made loads of mistakes, they loads did. of errors, but that is a consequence of what was such a tenacious defensive performance from Sale. They were just smashing everything that moved. They are physical. Ben Curry and Sam Dugdale were immense. And um, uh, George Ford was was ace on, on attack. So d- defensively, they just wrecked Saracens, yeah. threw them out of their rhythm. James Harper, what an end to the season he's had. <laughs> like Fellow coach of mine at Manchester Metropolitan University. And, Is uh, he? Yeah. He, co- he, he does the forwards coaching for the first team there. And... Um, yeah, he, he's got the starting job at tight prop, and he he wrecked Mako Vinopolo at scrum time. Well, the first scrum was a penalty against Sale because there's three minutes played of no rugby, which is ideal, really. <laughs> so um, I can't remember exactly how it went, but something happened. There's a scrum. Maybe the ball didn't go with ten. There was a, the, there was a scrum. A few resets. Sale gave away the penalty. Elliot Daly missed the kick. Um, and I thought, hmm, this doesn't look great for Sale. But then after that, they just absolutely battered them. And, you know, they they battered the... Christian Judge got taken off, didn't he, at half-time? Right, Richie so. only came on. And, and by the way, Christian Judge is up against Bevan Rod. And with the yeah. best one in the world, Bevan Rod is a phenomenal player, but yeah. not a phenomenal scrummager. So, I, I, you know, Saracens, I, that is their biggest point of weakness. They need to get some, get, yeah. get some new front rows a, ASAP. Which, um, so that was an interesting announcement uh, this week in the player signings that Harlequins have signed an ex Saracens. TT Lamasatelli from Leon. Yeah, yeah Leon? good sign. Yeah. Great signing for Quins. Um, surprised that Saracens didn't get him back. Yeah, I am as well. Massively surprised, actually, because he'd be, um, yeah, a very nice li- little addition to them. Uh, wait, what are the front row options for next year? Richie only still there. Yep, he 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 is quality. Theodan, Jamie George, and then Lucid Prop. I don't know. Eroni Maui. They brought yeah. in Phil Brantingham from Newcastle. Oh yeah, and, that's all right then. Well, it's and okay. they they brought they brought back Reese Carey as well. Oh, they'll be that's, fine. That's a pretty good signing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but they're both Luceds, aren't they? Uh, Brantingham, yes, yes, uh, yes. Okay, which is. Good when Macavillan Polo is going. You need a tight head though. That, that's yeah. what you really need. The monstrous yeah. tight head, like uh, yeah, you know, just Vincent com- Cock. Just co- convert one. Apparently, Thomas de Toy was a loose head, and he's now a tight head. Uh, it does. I, I don't know. I've spoken about this at length. It does bother me that props don't regularly train both sides. It's it's your job. Like, it's your actual profession. Well, it no, it's it's not even that. It's your jo- well, yes, it is that. It's your job. How much more valuable are you? Well, yes, exactly. It's it's a yeah. financial decision. Yeah, and for clubs and, as well. Why are they not running courses after training? Like, do you want to play tight head? Okay, cool. We'll keep some academy boys down, and you learn to play tight head. Why are they not upskilling the boys? I mean, they're basically the same body shape. I mean, they are the same body shape. Mm. If you put them all in the and line, they know what the opponent's trying to do. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, that's going to make a very crude um, analogy there, but I won't. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you line up these boys and you get someone to tell you which, which are loose heads and which are the tight heads, you would never know. You would never well, know. Especially someone like Thomas Detoy, who's listed at 136 kilograms. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Play where you want. Exactly right. Well, James Harper never even started as a prop. I think he started as an eight or a flanker. Huh. So it happens all the time. Uh, Evan Rod I... obviously never started as a prop. There's no way that that boy Surely started. not. Nah. Uh, and Ellis Genji didn't either. Uh, I um, I was really, I was really impressed with Sale. Uh, Saracens were poor. They, they were they, very th- poor. They were not good. They won't be that bad. That bad again. I don't think. There's, yeah, there, there's two stats that kind of jump out on this. Uh, one penalties conceded, nine for Saracens, only four for Sale. Four, four is very impressive. That's amazing. And, actually, 
and directly related, Saracens scrum success only 54% on their own scrum. Just one on Owen Farrell. Did you see the way he's speaking to Luke Pearce? I know you're going to say it it was great, Tim. I really don't like it. I mean, we don't have to deal with him anymore, so it's not really a massive problem. (laughs) But did you hear the way he addressed him regarding the TMO decisions? Uh, I'd just say that Luke Pearce is the the, the best English referee, and if it if if as a conversation between captain and referee across the line, Luke Pierce would have dealt with it. So. it did, well, it, it doesn't need to cross the line. All it needs to do is make Luke Pierce think oh, he's he's a bit of a dick. Well, I'd, I'd say Luke Luke Pierce is a big boy. He can he can deal with it. If there was yeah, but, a, if, there, if on, there was an issue, on, he would have he would have brought it up. Hang on. I mean, we we have to remember, right? And I, look, I'm not a big role model this role role model that. Just by I, just because of who he is and being a captain. He needs to be speak. I mean, like I say, it doesn't matter anymore. He's not part of the national setup, and we don't have to de- deal with him in in the in the Premiership. So who cares? But what do you say to Luke, to Luke Pierce? Will you check that on the TMO? He goes, "No, Owen, I'm fine." And then it's just a tired. Well, you check everything else. I'm like, how petulant! Just say yes, sir. Fine. And oh, and he did something else as well with that knock on, which actually wasn't a knock on. Um, again, just just swearing and petulance, and I just think. Christ, grow up. Just grow up. And you know, for two seconds when you're talking to the ref, just be a bit more respectful. And then you can go away and swear and mutter, mutter underneath your breath late, um, later. But it just, it just never stops. I, I did like his um, get up, you soft, so-and-so to Bev and Rod. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. No, I'm, I'm all was, in, by the way, good. I'm all in for that. He gets a massive tick in the in, in the yes box for that one. I mean, he he, he was absolutely right in the build up to that moment where he spoke to Luke Pierce. There was a hundred percent a knock on from from Sale, which is what he was asking to be checked. Mm. But Luke Pierce is within his rights to say no. We're not checking a knock on. Yeah, right. So it was, well, it was a robust conversation Ooh. between a captain and a coach. If it had been anyone from Saracens other than Owen Farrell, I would have said it was bang out of order. But he's the captain, and if it crossed the line, Luke Pierce would have dealt with it. I hope he wasn't the captain. The- this game <laughs> was he the captain was Mario the captain no it's fine um, I was going to say something did you see the incident with Van Zell and uh, Ben Curry no there's like this little incident right where Ben Curry lands on Van, Van Zell Van Zell gets up and sort of flips Ben Curry to the floor Ben Curry lands on his neck sorry lands on his Shoulder, but then later hits his head, and I'm like, "Oh Christ, this could be this could be a red card." Uh, anyway, Pierce, like, yep, ab- absolutely fine. Um, but if you didn't see it, it's hard to explain. But there was all sorts of um, carry on about Ben Curry was lying on him too long, according to, to comms, which I don't think think that he was. And then Van Zyl does this sort of it's not quite a flip, but it's sort of I, like you have to see it. But the point I was going to make on that is. Uh, twofold, like that is just something which happens in um, in the game. Absolutely fine, even though uh, Curry lands on his head. Who cares? Um, but second of all, I love the way that the referees are just just letting it happen. Like there was no need to get involved with that. There's in no contrast to-, to what happened on Friday night in the Edinburgh Munster game, at a critical part of the game actually, um, RG Snayman puts in a shot. Which I mean, some might have argued it was slightly late, but it, it was it, he was committed. It's fine. It's one of those Ben Healy kicked the ball. Tackle comes in from R.G. Snayman. R.G. Snayman stays laying on top of uh, Ben Healy, pushing him into the floor. Good. Uh, and so Bill Matter comes and just tackles him off Ben Healy, and Bill Matter gets penalised oh. because he he escalated it. I mean, it, it's like the ref made it sound like they all broke out into a, a big brawl, but actually all it was was Bill Matter did that, and then they all just sort of came in and grabbed each other's shirts, and, and then they all... Got on with it, and the ref came in and said, "You uh, you escalated that, um, so penalty." And then from that, Munster scored. Edinburgh fans were livid. Hmm, what do I think about that one? So on the on the face, I'm like, "Yeah, just no action taken. Restart the game with the scrum. Whoever had the ball is one way I look at it." On the mm. other hand, I do like the old, um, "You just don't retaliate. You mm. just don't retaliate." Um, even though he's not retaliating, is he? He's helping out a mate, and actually, that's a key component of rugby, isn't it? You help your mates. Yeah, yeah. So, but then you don't. Then you don't escalate. I, I, I'm not overly worried about that. He could have diffused that with a, just quite a simple. Hey, come on, RG, 
you made the hit. There's nothing wrong with the tackle. Get yourself off, Bill. Don't take the law into your own hands. Get on with it. But one of the things about in Seth- fact, in fact, do you remember the old days when when we when we were kids and play? You shake hands. You yeah, make shake, shake hands. hands. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got to say the thing which I'm not liking about Sale at the moment. Their players seem to have a little bit of a, of a propensity to dive on the floor. I don't, have you noticed this? I've seen Gus Ward it a few times. They do have a little, as a group, they do seem to want to throw themselves on the floor a little, not massively, but there's this tiny, tiny element of them doing it. Show me the incentive, I'll show you the behaviour. How many people, and it's not just Sale, how many people now, when there's a a shot, even if they're not actually hurt, that could could potentially be borderline high, make sure they stay down. I think Andre Esterhazen did it last week. Yeah, it is happening, isn't it? Yeah. Slowly, slowly, it is happening. Um, just before we move on from this game, did you hear the post match from um from from Alex Anderson? It's more the pre match. All the pre match sounded like the best bit that I didn't hear. Oh, I've I've, I've not heard the pre match. Well, I mean there's there's in broadcasting there's a line that uh, maybe it's from radio but there's Oh it, god, there's yes. there's a mantra that I've always um worked under which is every mic is a live mic so if, right. you're, in, if, you're, if you're in a studio with a microphone don't say anything yeah. that you wouldn't want to be broadcast just just don't say don't don't tell anyone about this because i've not heard it i want you to talk about it it, it um it, in a second let's just do um alex Anderson's pre uh, yeah, yeah, post-match right um so it's not like <laughs> doyler asked him tell me alex like the power of hunger <laughs> and the first thing alex Anderson says the power of hunger yeah is I don't, um, I don't pray, or at least as much as I should do, which I love that because obviously there's an objective amount that you, that you should pray, you know. Um, and then he said something along the lines of, "But I do have the belief in the power of collective will and the universe delivering it." I mean, wow, wow! I have the, I, I believe in the power of practicing your lineouts. I mean, I don't believe that they win that game <laughs> unless they have some absolute monsters smashing it. I mean, could can you? Do you think us three could win that game with the power of collective will? Do you think the universe would would deliver us a 20, 20 to ten victory against Saracens if us and then twelve other mates showed up at uh, the Stone X? <laughs> Oh, I do love some of these Samson quotes. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, to 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 be fair to him, I, I understand the point he makes, and I quite like. I do believe, like Alex Anderson does, in the power of like ma- you can manifest things if you have a mindset of like this. This is my goal. This is what we're fo- oh, this is what we're focused agree. on. You will you will do all the things along the way, which in those little tiny one percent all add right. up to the objective being achieved. But you are right. I sometimes think right. He has broadly the right idea. Right. The broadly the message is spot on. And if you just stopped, at, I believe in the power of collective will. I'm like, yeah, that's absolutely right. And the universe delivering and it. the universe delivering it. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see what drills that he's doing for the universe. uh... Cool fact, a crocodile can't stick out its tongue. Also, you can get health insurance for a month or just under a year in some states. United Healthcare short-term insurance plans, underwritten by Golden Rule Insurance Company, offer flexible, budget-friendly coverage for you. Learn more at UH1.com. Quality sleep is essential. That's why the Sleep Number Smart Bed is designed for your ever-evolving sleep needs. Need a bed that's firmer or softer on either side? Helps you sleep at a comfortable temperature? Sleep Number smart beds let you individualize your comfort, so you sleep better together. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now, save 50% on the Sleep Number limited edition smart bed for a limited time. For J.D. Power 2023 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. <laughs> Delivering things. Um, and the other one he said is, uh, something like we're pra- <laughs> like we're working on being around together more, being around each other more. Like, what does that even mean? But yeah, uh, as usual, a, a banging post-match. I, I, part of me wants them to go all the way just so I can hear how they did it, you know, was it temporal interference? Was it, you know, soul, solar storms? Like, what was it that pushed Sale over that limit this year? Right, here's a question but, then. Oh, go on, Phil. I was going to say, do you think there is a danger that we're going to get a repeat final from last year, given the draw now? I really do, actually. I'd be up for that. I do wonder. Because there's, there's some good storylines. There's obviously, well, it's all the storylines we had last year. 
uh, with the addition of this is the disbanding of the Saracens generation. Yeah. And that's interesting you mentioned that so, because... Um... I... Oh, so on. No, no. Oh, yeah. um, the post-match that, for... That's it. The post-match for... What's his name? Uh, Mark McCall. It was kind of poignant. He's like, yeah, there's no more There's no more second chances now. This is it. This is it for this group of players. I Watching Saracens, I just think they don't... They sort of know who they are, but it's nowhere near as effective as past Saracens teams. But they're kind of like a ageing fighter. They have that one last punch. And I believe they're going to deliver that one last punch. That's kind of how I think it's going to go down. You don't think they're going to be like... Tyson Fury desperately trying to stay standing up while he's getting battered. No, I don't. I really don't. I think the. I think. I think it's going to be more like Tyson and Jake Paul. <laughs> so, um, well, well, here's a question then. Oh, so, so no, sorry. Here before you we ask a, a question, why don't you delve a little deeper into the hot mics? Well, I didn't hear any of it. No, I didn't either. That's what. But, I was... No, but what, one thing I have been aware of before. So, if essentially what I gather is, I think it was at the stoop. Is because it would it would have been a it would so how do I how do I I'm trying to think of the way to explain this where I don't in the simplest way possible. Basically, this happens all the time when games get broadcast to people that watch in America on the Peacock app or people that watch on the World Feed or um or just watch on some um, illegal stream online. Quite often, what you just pick up is what's coming out of the broadcast truck. But it's actually not going to television. Um, with you, yeah. Um, so th- they will only go live. The microphone. They will only go live on TV. Say five minutes before the match, and then at half time, it will be while the adverts are on. It what you won't hear it. Only what people watch on on the Peacock app, app in America. What people see on these streams is the full uncut, n- complete feed. Yes. Of the match. So at half time in America, what they see are loads of replays of all the tries, which are just the broadcast trucks doing a bit of editing. And you see it all. And I was aware of this before. I've had people in America years ago contact me going, I can, I can hear you. I can hear you chatting with whoever it was, Brian O'Driscoll. I can hear you, you guys I'd chatting. literally rather listen to that than some of the analysis. Of well, the time. especially as it's unfiltered and it's, yeah, just, it's exactly. just like conversation, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I got absolutely battered the other week, or whatever, oh. all of that sort of stuff. So, uh, I was always, as I've said, in broadcasting, every mic's a live mic. So, I'm very disciplined on that sort of thing. Was it Lawrence Delalio? I don't, was... I, I didn't hear it, but apparently there was about a good ten minutes of just chatter. So I heard it was Lawrence Delalio talking about conflicts of interest for players that used to play for that club, broadcasting, and about and, and about contract negotiations. So, oh, really? Yeah. God, I wish I listened to that. Yeah, I know. Our, 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 one of our friends on our Egg Chasers group um, heard the whole oh, thing. So, but any, anyway, just... Well, I would just... I'd like to point out this, that it's a very, very sensible way to go to lobby for TNT not to have a conflict of interest. If you used to play at that club, you can't compensate on, on, on the club. If... If you're looking for work and your whole career happens to be spent at Wasps, this is a great opportunity. This is exactly what you should be lobbying for because you can work at every single game. Mm. Same with London Irish, same Worcester, because I, you've, got I, no, I, I, you've got no conflict. I don't like a, I don't mind a conflict anyway. No, I love it. I mean, I actually, I think it's part of, I think it should be mandatory that you should have one commentator or one um, analyst from each of the teams playing. Because how on earth do you know what it is to play at Harlequins? You know, if if Harlequins are playing, the best man for that is probably Hugo. You know, if um, Leicester are playing, the best man for that is probably Ben Kay or Austin because they know what it is to be at that club. And I think that's massively important. I don't think it's conflict. Well, if it is a conflict, it's a conflict that I want to see. And there are certain uh, pundits who would get almost no work, like Chris Ashton or, or Goody, for example, who's played for half the teams in the league. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to get zero work in future. Well, uh, because they, they haven't spent long enough at a, cer- at a certain... Uh, no, sorry. If, if conflict if, was a problem. Oh, if, yeah. If, sorry. Yeah, sorry, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't care about conflict. I don't care. I, I, 
Are you, are you good at your job? That's the only criteria I care about. Are you good? Precisely. Yes. Fine. Crack on. Don't, yes. Don't, don't can can you that. offer an interesting and insightful opinion on this game? Yes or no? Yes. And some of that will be from um, the history and what it means to play at the stoop or play at the rec or whatever. And some of it will be because you're, um, you diligently study the game, the players, the league, whatever it is. So yeah, e- either or for me, as long as you're an interested individual. Here's a question, just to move things along. Did Northampton make an error in selection? We saw that, mm. just, and just to dovetail this with Leinster last year, they, in retrospect, probably feel like their players were undercooked going into big matches, and that was a significant contributing factor as to why they didn't win anything last year. Well, they rotated for the URC and that, and a bit of hubris meant they lost to Munster, and then they also were not peak form against uh, La Rochelle in the Champions Cup final. Northampton now, some of their players are not going to have played since the Champions Cup semi-final, and then they're they're going to be going in a fortnight's time into a playoff match. It's always a risk. I really think it's a massive risk. If you think about the teams. If you think about the makeup of, say, the Northampton psyche compared to Sale Sharks psyche, they've just come off the back of a loss, Northampton, but they're like, yeah, well, you know, it's fine. The boys will be back in, in a few weeks' time. Whereas Sale will be absolutely bouncing and they've had their first team out and they've had a big win against a, you know, a big rival. Bath are a big rival. You know, in the context of this competition, Bath are a massive, ri- massive rival and they wanted to go out there and absolutely smash them, in, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think it is a mistake. I would have put my best team out. And if there's yeah. someone 50-50, he doesn't play. Were you surprised, Phil? Uh, because because there's a rest week next weekend. That's the bit that meant it didn't really make sense to me. Same. It it, it really didn't make sense to me either. Um, I, and I, I thought exactly the same thing. And I thought this was going to be um, one of the big talking points of the weekend, actually. And it hasn't been but only because Saracens fluffed their lines. So it, it could have been that North Saints lost top spot and then everything's different because they've kind of consciously um, mm. fielded a weakened team. Now, as it happened, they retained top spot, but not not through their own steam. And they've given a load of um, kind of buoyancy and forward momentum to one of their title rivals who've got a, a stonking win and absolutely smashed them uh what was it six try bonus point win at home yeah and you so, just and you describe saracens as having fluffed their lines this is this is another element of it uh, like when northampton were going through this and sort of i'm sure their coaches would have um what's it called when you uh what war gamed it yeah. they they would have thought oh saracens are pr- let's imagine saracens win Okay, so they'll finish top, we'll finish second. We're probably going to play against Bath. Or at least there's a good chance if risking this selection, what what ends up happening is we play the team that we just mm. didn't pick a strong team against. Yeah. Yeah. Which either of those scenarios are not great scenarios. Either no. uh, Saracens finish top, um, that's not a great scenario. And um, playing against a team that has just got a bonus point win against you admittedly with a, a weakened team but I, I didn't like it right from the start now we might be totally wrong and they might be they might have been carrying a load of niggles and go into this lovely and fresh and firing for the last two games of the season but if they don't if they don't win it then Sorry. everyone will point on this and say this is the reason why mm. yeah so the only way this works right for me is if you're in a situation that Exeter were in a few years ago when your third team is effectively the fourth best team in in the league. And then you just want maximum competition for places to really fine-tune that squad for when the big day comes. That works for me. That's absolutely fine. I don't see that that's what Northampton have done. The other way that you lose here is, you know, look at Saracens. I bet you that Saracens will be absolutely bouncing to, um, right, to right the wrong. Oh, Sorry. Well, uh, that's what it was. Because the power pack was going across your lead. There you go. That's fine. Well done, Tim. No worries. Yeah. So, um, it, yeah, I, I think with you two, it was a, it was a mistake. They should have put their best team up because at very worst, you you lose, and then that team wants a little bit of vengeance. Yeah, I don't think anyone. If if Northampton had lost to Bath yesterday with their with their first choice team, I don't think anyone's 
sitting there going, oh, we should have rested our players. They've only got a fortnight to get ready for the semi-final. Yeah, I completely agree. But now they're going, hold on, some of these lads haven't pl- won't have played in three weeks. And some players, that's probably a good thing. Um, you can imagine Courtney Laws would probably be grateful for a bit of rest, and he'll and you know he'll hit the ground running and play. But there, there will be other players who that's uh, they'll get a bit rusty. Yeah, I mean that's a really easy problem to solve, though, isn't it? You put in someone else other than Courtney Laws, and the challenge is simple: just be better than one of the best guys that's ever played the game. <laughs> you know, and if you are, you'll play in the final. W- what an incentive to be one of the best ever to play it! You know, but that's how think, people you know people take their chances. The the other side of this is. Two weeks ago, they had uh, an interna- international standard game uh, and they came up three points short against an international team in one of the most physical club games you will ever play in. Yeah, fair. And, and so you can understand there being some bruised bodies. But last weekend, they played uh, an A team, <laughs> an under 21s team, and beat them <laughs> 90 points to nil. Yeah. So it's. That across those two, you feel like it's evened it out itself out somewhat, and I definitely agree. The points on on someone like Laws, yes, rest um, because you've got a thirty four year old body. Whereas some of the others, and and to play Hutchinson at ten, um, that was an odd call. Yeah, I think if this if this is Saracens and they did this, I'd say yeah, whatever. Mark McCall knows what it is to be at the sharp end of serious rugby on, on a regular basis. If, if he says it's fine, it's fine. Northampton are not that organisation yet. You know, they very rarely uh, make a dent in the playoffs. When they do get to the playoffs, they usually lose immediately. You know, they've not gone that far in the European Cup for a long time. This is a very good team, but they don't have the experience yet of being at the sharp end, so they, they shouldn't have risked it. Well, we're going to see, aren't they? They got to um, they got to semi-final, no, was it the year before last? Did they? Of yeah. Europe? No, no, Leicester. They played Leicester in the semi-final of the playoffs when Leicester won it. Oh, right, yeah. So when they've gone into the playoffs. Oh, play- three years ago, that is now. Go yeah, so I can't remember them making an impact in, two, the, no. in the playoffs because they got smashed by... Yeah, Sons. yeah, yeah. They've been smashed by... Yeah, you are right. They haven't been to a final in, in a long time. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to see in a couple of weeks that this is a different Northampton team and Phil Dowson and Sam Vesti, maybe, they, they probably know better than we, so... Who knows? Who knows? It's an, inter- it's an interesting point. And you're right, Phil, I thought it might have got more people talking about it. Um, it might have been more said because it, it was the manner of the defeat against Bath. They got battered. Yeah, they did. They really did. Um, yeah, it, they it, was, did. it was It was. was one-way traffic. And it, they, their second try came in the 70th, breakaway try in the 79th minute. And that didn't even make it look respectable. Mm. It was just one-way traffic. Mm. Um, who watched the Leicester game? Did, did you watch it, Tim? Yeah, well, I watched that. Finally, Leicester put in a performance that matches the names that were on that team sheet. Yeah, it actually looked like if you just were completely dispassionately and hadn't seen any of the rugby this season, and you just were handed two team sheets, it's the scoreline you would have predicted because. It wasn't X to a poor. It's Leicester were really good. Finally, Jasper Visa was doing what he does. Montoya, all these players were were um, just they were so abrasive. They they absolutely rinsed Exeter's blitz defence, and it's high risk, high reward. But Leicester just obviously did a lot of homework and managed to either run through that centre channel or get get around the outside of it and. Um, yeah, so I, I was really impressed with Leicester, but it was, I was like, where were you the rest of the season? Well, to be fair to them, around Christmas, just before Christmas, I remember saying, my money, or did I say my money on the team to win would be Leicester? If I didn't say that, I probably said the the best team in the league is Leicester. Um, and I still think, you know, maybe next year they've got the capacity to be the best team in, in the league. So from that point of view, this yeah. year is a massive letdown. They're, they're, yes, I suppose the context... You could, if you were being charitable, World Cup and Six Nations, they're by far the most affected team. By far. Yeah, they had a lot of lads out. Yeah, I mean, they. I just think they're a very high-quality outfit. But looking at the table, there's no there's no denying it. This uh, season is a disappointment. Ollie Hassel Collins scored an ace try, and that's a name you just haven't heard this season. And no, go, not... go back a year and a half, and he was starting for England in the Six Nations. And he's had a... I mean, he's, there's talk he's going to be playing for Wales in another year. Um, oh God, he doesn't deserve that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he was great. He, he played very well. 
Mm. And from what I saw, Freddie Stewart was excellent yeah, as well. Yeah, he was good. Yeah, disappointed for Exeter though. Um, I think to be going into the final round of games with a chance of qualifying, yeah, they'll be disappointed that they didn't. But that speaks to how well they've done. Yeah, the, the league table in the in the Premiership this year is just so brutal because it does look now from last week we were praising Exeter. This week, look at the league table, and this is where they finished. Uh, that's pretty disappointing, actually. Not a great. Season. Yeah, I mean, seven. you can't. You know, the league table doesn't lie. That's where mm. they are. So, yeah, they're not great. I really wanted them to do better than they did. But there again, I'm very happy that Sale, and Sale are in the top four. Bloody competitive league. Hugely competitive league. It's ridiculous, actually. When you, Whatever league you look at, it's all looking ace. I don't know, it's, it's, it, I don't know what, what it is, but I've watched a lot of rugby this weekend. I spent, my, I spent this morning going through all the top 14 games. And it's, all, it's all awesome. Well, Leon got a great win against a very well coached team. Uh, the lead can you believe that they beat a team so well led as Racing? I mean they've invested so much money in leadership, but they did. They did it. It's um Yeah. How many rounds are there left of that? Two rounds. Currently Paul Gustard's Stad France are be- second are beating Phil's beloved Bordeaux. Are they? For the, for the second time this season, mm. Wales are really coming off in Bordeaux. A, a real paper tiger. I'm just having a look at the lineup. I reckon they must be resting all their players. Yes, they are. No, that's. Oh no, they're not. No, they're going full ball. The, Bordeaux is, uh, yeah, Bielbury, Pinot, Mofana, Jalibert, Luku, uh, Tatafu. Yeah. Yeah, Tamafuna. They've got a. It's a pretty strong lineup for for Bordeaux. But, um, I, Sounds like a, a bit of a glass cannon to me. <laughs> um, too long got up to third, anyway. Yeah. We know that, um, is it Montpellier? They're going to be in the barrage the playoff. Match, the access game, yeah. Yeah, yeah Are barrage. They? Good yeah. God. Wow. That's, yeah, um, with yeah. all those names, they're going to be playing against, let me have a look, because there was uh, George North's team uh, X on Provence. Or, or uh, yeah, what's the table there looking like? Because it's all finished now, isn't it? They're, oh, they're going to be playing against Van. Oh, hold on, is there playoffs? Oh, there's playoffs in Pro D2. Sorry, Pro D2 has playoffs, and if you win the playoffs, you go to the b- b- barrage, or how does this, how's this working? Yeah. So do, you play off to, do you play off to get in? The top two get a bye to the semifinals. Yeah. Three to six play each other in the knockout game. Then you have the semi-final, final winner goes to the top 14, loser goes to the access match. The the loser goes to okay. Which means it go, must go on forever. And ever, and ever, <laughs> and ever. There's never enough rugby. That means there's, there's a, a game, is that the same weekend as the final in the top 14? Might be. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I don't know what's happening at Montpellier. I know some of the names that play for them. And this does feel very much like a death sentence for whoever is <laughs> drawn against them. Yeah. Van. Oh, God. It, it, I'm just looking. It is a, it's a 33-0 game season. Yeah. 16-team league. You play everyone twice. 30 games. It's, it's too much, isn't it? It is that, too much. <laughs> That is savage. So Stephen Jones wrote an article today. Did you read it? No. As he does most Sundays. Quite interesting, as always. Always um, something to talk about. He claims that the Premiership needs to expand and bring back relegation. So I know where you stand on the relegation. 100% on the relegation. I'm 100% against it. Um, I'm not 100% against it. Keep Newcastle. Oh, God. The thing is about Newcastle, they're only a bit of investment away from being good. Yep. But you it. also show me the incentive, I'll show you the outcome, as Phil would say, or behaviour. Yeah. And the behaviour is I don't need to spend any money on this team because we got guarant- we can guarantee to get the three and a half million then, quid a year. In that case, just sell it. Just sell it because it still costs you money to keep. Like You either want to be in rugby or you don't want to be in rugby. And nobody is buying Newcastle to make money. So just sell it. That, that's what that's what they should do. Yeah, but the, what they're doing is it's like holding stock for something. It's, I, I'm... I'm just going to sit and hold, except for the until until some 
mythical pot of gold arrives maybe from maybe from the the far east yeah i would just point out this that if they are in some you know buy and hold strategy it's costing them a lot of money to do so and if they are any type of businessman whatsoever, they'll see the direction of traffic in the Premiership and go, hmm. Well, I don't know. This is not great. Well, let's wait and see what the profit loss is for Newcastle next season. Because again, without relegation and with the ability to just operate and no no um, minimum salary. No, this is fair, actually. They, they may be working on such small margins and with the increased amount of money they'll be getting next year due to the professional game whatever it is called, PGP thing, which has increased the amount of money, maybe it will break even and then they, then they can just then they can just sit and hold. Maybe, which is my point. You have to have the threat yeah. well, maybe, of it going. Maybe in nine years' time, they'll be, they'll be champions just for the fact that they're the only ones that are left. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a long-term vision. You know, it, it's certainly an orthodox, but it could work. Yeah. So what was Stephen Joe saying? Expand and, re- and in- introduce relegation. Yeah. I, I tend... I kind of tend to agree i think it's or actually no either if you want to keep the same um season format then yes stephen jones is correct because having two months here and a month there where you have no premiership games is ridiculous well, let's just so but actually the answer is what phil has said many many times which is people people just need to get around the table and sort this out so that the season is staggered and you would have premiership all in a block like they do Super Rugby or the Japanese League. Well, I think you've got to look at it that way, certainly. And I think we can park the issue of relegation because we're going to add no new insight to that. We've done it to death. Yeah. But the idea of more teams is interesting. And the answer is no for me. I think the condensed amount of teams has done wonders for the standard of the sport in England. Uh, standard? Or how are you judging the standard? You mean competitiveness, you don't no, mean standard. I think I mean Do you think the, the teams are better? No, I don't actually. What I mean to say about that is the entertainment value. I think the right. quality of what I'm watching, it's quality. the quality of entertainment is definitely higher. I mean, this year, it, it feels that we're watching more competitive teams. Is the standard higher? That's a great question, because I think these teams do... The, the the beauty of this league at the moment is that there are no complete teams. Everyone is deeply flawed. And therefore, you've got these wonderful matches and, d- and different contrasting styles. I, I think part of that is because... Sorry, do Phil, do jump in, mate. But I, th- I think part of that is because the salary cap has been reduced and people aren't able to spend as much as they would like to spend. I think the the disparity between the teams will grow again when the salary cap goes up next year. I agree with you completely. Um, I think that what we have seen this year is how the Premiership would look if everyone spent to the new salary cap because of the reduced cost of the talent which has come into the league due to the folding of three teams. Due to the folding of three teams, yeah. So if you manage to, if somehow they manage to continue their spending commitments to the same level for the same level of players, I think you've got one hell of a product on, on your hands. But can the owners afford that? I suggest that they probably can't. Some of them can. A lot of them yeah. A few of, a few of them can while they're still interested. And while they, while it's not into their um, children's inheritance, or, or if you them. have so much of your children's inheritance, like Steve Lansdowne, that it really is inconsequential. Yeah, yeah. Or so much of your and, children- and he loves his rugby that much as well. To be fair to him, yeah. Or so much um, of your children's inheritance, such as is it Derek Richardson from Wasps, who just couldn't stop. You know, it, it, you know, he had to go till the bitter end. <laughs> so it works both ways. That one. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, also on the deeply flawed teams, because I do think they're deeply flawed. Ironically, it's because they con- they concentrate so much on one aspect of their game or their style that they are becoming quite formidable now. Think about the way that Northampton are playing and how they nearly turned over Leinster. You know, and you wouldn't look at that Northampton team and say that is a complete rugby team, but you do see a bit more innovation now within the within the Premiership because of you know, the styles that they're playing. I'd, I'd add that if they do want to keep n- no relegation, which I'm dead against, but if if that's the way that the powers that be decide that they want to want it to go, obviously the Premiership clubs are the, currently the ones marking their own homework and uh, basically deciding, and of course they want no relegation, so it, that's the farce of it at the minute. But if an independent body with a, a long-term vision decided that was the way to go, then what also has to happen is you have to have a quota system. I'm I, like, I know it's happening organically to a degree, at, particularly at some clubs rather than others, but th- this, it has to go the French way, the GIF system, 
English qualified. It has to be focused around making the England team good. What was the bouncy system that we came up with the other week? And uh, at the time, I thought it was the smartest thing <laughs> that I've ever thought of. Was it my idea? Or could have been your idea? It was, about, it was like the was it adopting a bit of the Irish model where you can't have too many players in the same position because all of the twelves in the Premiership had, had are not of, English. It had some sort of payment mechanism. So you start. Oh, it was like Steve Balthwick could decide to give money for things. Yeah, let's let's not go around that again. People can go back and listen to it. Yeah, go back and listen to it. Yeah. it it's it really is <laughs> high level genius of uh, you know the best standard. I don't um, doubt it. You threw me off what I was about. Sorry, no. uh, the the quota system. Yeah, quota system. Mm, fine. What I mean, I, Which, I I just think. Yeah, go, go on, go on, Phil. I was going to say they already do have a quota system, don't they? Like the GIF system. I can't. I can't remember precisely what it is, but it's. I think it's um, very similar. You, you just get a bonus. The EQP. You, you don't have to, but you get a bonus no, I, if you do. I, I. You do get the bonus, but I think you have to have a certain level. Um, I didn't think that was the case. No, I don't think there, it's mandatory. I just think you get um, extra money for it. You definitely do get the extra money. I'm sure there is something. Um, I'll have a look. Hmm. So. Um, do you want to turn your attention to next next week's final? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. It's oh, quite... actually, b- b- before we do, just while Phil's looking up his bits and pieces, did you see the? No, I'm not going to get uh, put too um, put too much importance on this, but the reaction to the Chandler Cunningham song. Oh, mate, it was two. It was two comments on an Instagram channel. I saw the email and I thought I looked at it and went, "There's two comments." I saw. Let's on, let's not give airtime to two to two. I saw idiots. Instagram. Was it was it not repeated? Two, on, two comments on Instagram. That was, was it. Was it not repeated on Twitter? I don't know. I don't know either because I can't get can't get on it. Yeah, no, it's such such a storm in a teacup. Good, good. It was a great shot by Chandler Cunningham himself. He's a beast, isn't he? Yes, he, he is a beast. He is. I think he's the future of the English game. Well, he needs to get better hands. He does have limitations. Talk about some people doing some things really well. He's brilliant at just being a. Monster. A monster. He goes forward well. But I also understand why, given the way London Irish played, RIP, I do miss them. Uh, mm. I understand the way London Irish played, I understand why he wasn't starting as well. Cause, why is that? Tell, tell me about it. Because um, he does some things really, really well. Yeah. But his hands aren't, aren't elite yet. He needs to be, but he needs to do better at that. Yeah. I and saw- he can, and he's, he's young. So he, he's, he's what, 20? Bin off the hands. Just, uh, just, just go forward. Just go forward. Do not pass that ball. Yeah, but imagine how devastating he'd be if he could tie in three defenders and then a little offload. No, forget it. It'd be just, amazing. Just go forward. Just go forward. <laughs> like that Bordeaux game, all he did was go forward. Like, I'm, there was no I'm not knocking it. Like I say, he's very, very good at what he does. He is, isn't he? I absolutely love him. And I agree with you. He is a, 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 going to be a big force for England. Mm. Any luck, Phil? Uh, I found an article from this year. <gasps> uh, recruitment change coming for Premiership clubs, um, but it references the previous rules, which were um, so historically maximum two foreign players can now be in any match day twenty three. Mm-hmm. However, that follows the Colpac, if you remember Colpac yeah. ruling, yeah. Fiji, South meant- Africa, all of that doesn't count. Any, yeah, so South Africa, Tonga, Fiji, and Samoa players are not counted as not historically counted as overseas. Right. So you could have two non-English South African, Tonga, and Fiji, and Samoan, uh, and possibly even Welsh and Scottish. So oh, it certainly wasn't as strict as uh, the GIF system. I'd say, uh, uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. But then the GIF system doesn't encompass. I mean, France doesn't encompass um, four nations. So yeah. what? Well, so the GIF system is a French passport, right? Uh, no, actually, it's it's, it it's looser than that. The GIF system means you have to have been French developed. So you could have been a South African that arrived when you were seventeen, and you're so, you're eligible. Ah, right. Okay, I heard it's passport for some reason. Have I made that up? No, I no. think I think that's for the national team. You have to be a citizen. Ah, is that what it is? Right. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. I was gonna say, so for England, that wouldn't necessarily be a good thing because the passports go across many nations. But never mind. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll do one final thing before we go on to the final. I'll tell you my um, premiership team of the season. You tell me if there's any ones you disagree with, because I reckon a lot of them you'll probably go, yep, yep, yep. 
because I've already done this on uh, Egg Chaser's YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, Benno Urbano, loose head prop. Curtis Langdon, hooker. Yes. Thomas de Toy, tight head prop. Maybe. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Will, maybe. Maybe. Uh, shout out for Will Collier. Yes. And Finn Baxter. Uh, I was about to say Finn Baxter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Finn Baxter's a good shout. Uh, sec- judge? <laughs> sec- <laughs> second row, I went uh, Maru Itoji, Charlie Yules. Ugh. I I agree with Charlie Yules. I think he's been I think he's been really good this season. Best best I've ever seen him play. Rusty Tuimo would have been another one. To, I was going to go with, uh, Pearson for exercise. Pearson's been great as well. Yeah, uh, that's good, good. Two good young shouts there. Um, and then back row, it was Courtney Laws, Will Evans, Zach Mercer. Will Evans, one hundred percent. Courtney Laws, uh, yes, when he plays. I, I did, Sam Graham would be a guy that I would put in there. Uh, I think Bradbury has been very good. He has been very good. Uh, Cunningham South has been very good. He hasn't played many games in the Premiership. That was my thought there. He has been good when he yeah, has played. That's true. Um, ben Curry as well. Ben Curry. Uh, I gave a mention to Ben Curry. He, I agree with that yeah. 100%. And also Andy Christie would have been in if he'd stayed fit. He, mm-hmm. start, he started like a train. And oh, and... And Gon- Gonzalez. Gonzalez has been ace as well. Yeah, yeah. a lot, lot of good, lot of good back row players. Uh, Half backs. Um, it was Ben Spencer and Finn Russell. Yeah, can't argue with that. With a shout for Harry Randall and Finn Smith. Yeah, no, I think you got it right. Yeah, same. Uh, Centers was Ben Argenti, Van Rensburg, and Henry Slade. Yeah, you can't argue with those two. Yeah, very happy with that. Uh, wingers was. Um, um, hold on. Uh, Slight home and Faye were both so. Ooh, not um, Ibatoya. I I gave a mention for Ibatoya. Um, I'm trying to think of someone else of note. Two pretty good. Hmm. Harlequin. Free- Freeman's been very good. <laughs> he has. Um, but playing thirteen and wing as well. Yeah. But I think I think you're right. Slight at home and Faye were both. So they're the two top try scorers as well in the league. So oh, okay. why not? And fullback, it was it would have been George Furbank until about a few weeks ago, but because he's not played very much and Tyrone Green started every game, I went for Tyrone Green. Good shout. Yeah, fine. And then when when I considered a player of the season, um it was uh, the the short list I came up with was in three to one. Will Evans, Ben Spencer, uh, Henry Slade, number one. He's my player of the season. I like that. Um, I, think, uh, I wouldn't have given it to favour, but maybe if there's a newcomer of the season, I'd have given it to Yeah, they'll have a breakthrough player, don't they? He would definitely yeah. win that. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, just one other premiership story. Rumours that Stuart Hogg is to return are interesting. <laughs> Which... Rumours which have been categorically denied by Steve Diamond. Oh, not have for the they? not for the first time that Steve Diamond has categorically yeah. denied now, that a player I, is. Correct. I have got some experience with categorical denials from from Steve Diamond. Yeah, I remember interviewing Steve Diamond about Marlon Yard, and it <laughs> definitely wasn't happening. I mean, it turns out Marlon Yard was at least as bad as anything which um, you know. Hoggy has been accused of, so go for it. Yeah, I don't see why not. Marlon Yard was only accused, by the way. Uh, he did some pretty bad things. Which he, were, he was only accused. No, no, he yeah. did some bad things which which were not illegal. It turns Correct. out, Correct. but he was not a good man. Yeah, just want to be fair. Any, and 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 Stuart Hogg is only under allegations at the moment, which is kind of you know. By the way, analogous. I, actually, maybe I'll talk about it on the Patreon pod. But there was there was someone in rugby that did, did something really horrible on that. that I, yeah, I'll save it for Patreon. Don't need to go there. Let's let's stay positive and talk about the the final then. Yes, let's do that. Um, so there's two things here. How do we want it to go, and how do we think it's going to go? So how would you like it to go, Tim? Uh, I want. I would like. I'd like to lose to win with just sparkling attacking rugby. Yeah. Jack Willis to be standing up there with the Champions Cup to go with his top 14 title that he won last year. I want, I, yeah, I, I want DuPont practicing his trophy polishing skills on his ski mask in anticipation of winning that trophy. Phil? 
and and then getting an Olympic gold medal in a couple of months' time. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now you're talking. So, so, as... so, so I, I, I'll tell you how I want this to go. Um, I'm, I'm going to be there, and I've got a fantastic day lined up. Got um, six of us going to it. We've got lunch in a little Italian restaurant that I know. <sighs> Maybe some seafood and some white wine. Stop it. Then head out to the game and then uh, watch the game. It's going to be... I don't really mind who wins. Um, I just want to see some massive hits and some cool tries from some top players. Have, have you got rid of my I, ticket yet? Uh, <laughs> yes, and then it became available. at the. Um, <laughs> so I've got rid of it once. I might be getting rid of it a second time. Okay. Okay. Well, um, you're not down there anymore. I was, uh, and now I'm not. But if that ticket's available, I don't know. You could you could um, join back up with us again if you wanted. Well, we'll talk we'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got dinner at an American style brasserie afterwards, and then some fun and games booked for the evening too. So I'm I'm going to have a brilliant day. That Saturday. sounds ace. It does sound good, doesn't it? That sounds really good. Oh. <laughs> and it's the only game because all the other leagues are stopping down for the Champions you know Cup. The, you know what the big deal is for, for this, Tim? What? It's not even rugby related. It's the fact that I've got to share the train there and back with the FA Cup final. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, so have what? I. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. Oh, I don't so, know if I want to do that now. Yeah. London London is going to be oh, no. in- interesting this weekend because you've got... FA Cup final from Manchester, United versus City. So oh, the trains God. will be chaos. And you've also got... Oh, that's horrendous. Obviously, the <laughs> Champions it? Cup. And then on, on Sunday, it's the um, football championship playoffs as well. Oh, God. The playoff final. So London <laughs> London is going to be interesting. Hence why... I, and it's a bank holiday. Hence why I've booked um, lots of different things. So we've always got a table somewhere. I was thinking of, well, in fact, I'd planned to, uh, re- very recent plan made to go down for the match in order to do some work on a French project with the Toulouse fans and some Toulouse people. But yeah, that, that might be enough to swerve it. Ishk. Yeah, and that's... I hadn't thought of that. So I want to go there and back on the same day. Nope. What about nope. flying in that Heathrow? I did, do you know, I did that for the Army Navy game when I was, I was. Can I just not get on your jet? I was, I was, comment, I was commentating on the Army Navy game the other weekend, and I looked at the trains, and then I just went, "Oh, just let me just have a look at the flights." Return to Heathrow, which is you know not easy to get to. That's easy to get to to and from Twickenham. Um, down and up on the same day was ninety pounds return. Was it really? Yep. Amazing. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Uber it is. Bit of a ball ache in a <laughs> Uber. <laughs> Uber. <laughs> I've got a friend, right, who comes up to have a drink with me in Manchester on occasions. And towards the end of the night, he jumps in his Uber and he goes back to North Wales. Wow. Right? And I'm like, you're mad. Why do you do it? And he goes, well, I like being in my own bed. But actually, by the time the Uber drop, drops me off, it's about 200 quid. And uh, that's what it costs to be in a hotel anyway. So why not? I was wow. like, that's not a terrible shout, actually. Wow. Well, there you go. Uber from London, sleep all all the way back. Perfect. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to finish the podcast, but I'm going to mention the thing that got me annoyed the other day. And it's, uh, I've got nothing, no, I've got no animosity with this person. Save, save with a patron. Save with a patron, yeah, absolutely save with it. Okay, right. Who is the person? G- g- just give me a hint. I'll, I'll show you, don't don't reveal it, but. Oh, yeah, save with a patron. Get him there, get him. <laughs> Uh, right, patreon.com forward slash egg chasers. Uh, we're all going for a Toulouse victory. No, that, that's that's what, what JB said. What would we like? What do we think is going to happen? I I think Leinster are going to win. I also think Leinster are going to win. I think the weight of history is just Leinster will win. I think Toulouse will win. Mm. Ma, I tell you what, Ma, uh, Manny Mayafu is outrageously good player. We talk, we talk about Dupont and Ramos and Willis, all the rest of it, but he is so good. I mean, him against McCarthy. I can't wait to see again. Oh, my, sorry. I thought you were talking about the hooker for no, a second there. Manny Mayafu. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Malvaka. He's eight. Malvaka. Yeah, everywhere on the pitch when you look at it. Cyril Bai against Furlong. Sheehan against Malvaka. Andrew Porter against. Um, 
Oh no, actually, that's probably a weak weak one for. So it's old Geary, isn't it? It's not that great, but yeah, Mayafu is pretty good. Mayafu McCarthy, yeah, Mayafu McCarthy, and then um, Willis Van der Fleer, Doris against well, whoever ends up playing eight. Cross. It's going to come down to who yeah. plays, you know, who plays best as a team, and it's a cliche. Jameson Gibson Park Dupont. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a clear one and two, a clear one and two there. Uh, Manny Mayafu is maybe my favourite front, front row player on the front, front five player. Oh, Malvaka, you're talking about. Sorry, Malvaka. Malvaka thank yeah. you, yeah. yeah. Although, Mahafu could play from the room, I'm sure. He'd do all right. He's a, he's a big old slice. He is. Right. So we're, we, we we would all like to lose to win. We all think Leinster are going to win. Yeah, I, w- I want them in their ski masks. <laughs> uh, yes. Right. Um, Patreon.com slash eggchasers for more. Thank you for your support. Hit subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Let the boys end. Terms and conditions apply. See site for details.